Welcome to Hannah's Heart. So Hannah, she's just one of the women who did struggle with infertility in the Bible. No matter who we are, we can be inspired by the fact that Hannah took her pain to God and God heard her and was with her. So when she was praying at the temple, she had been weeping and not eating and her lips were moving, but her eyes were closed and the priest was like, why are you drunk at the temple? Because yeah. it can become an obsession when you want Wanting a child so deeply. And desiring that baby and to be a mama. Every holiday, every Mother's Day. This is not a show that's going to promise you a certain outcome. But this is a show that says, however God answers your cry, we know that He's enough. Hey, I'm Ann. And I'm Kendra. And thank you so much for coming on and listening to Hannah's Heart today. We are a ra- radio podcast, mm-hmm. radio show, radio show sorry, and podcast, and podcast um, that really started by focusing on couples struggling with infertility and miscarriage. <clears throat> and um, like we've said many times before now, it's just grown to more than that. And so today we're definitely still going to be um, talking about in in a way, infertility, Mm -hmm. but um, maybe not God answering our desires. Like Mm -hmm. we feel like we want them answered. You want to introduce our dad? That's hard. That's hard. That's real. uh, Oh, it is. Real walking out the Christian life. Um, Yeah. Infertility, I feel like touches on um, so many issues in your heart that really, um, we talk about how the the word of God um, divides soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and God Mm -hmm. uses these difficult seasons that we're in to to really test us. Um, But before we get into all of that, we have some in-studio guests. We do. Sheila and Ben wave. For those of you that are watching, which you can watch us, you can see them waving on camera. (laughs) They don't know where the camera is. They're like, hi, hi. Um, They came all the way from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. We're in Mississippi. I know. That's a long way. What, 14 hour drive. Um, Some Hannah's Heart listeners. And we have some connections. I didn't even realize we went to school together. We just figured this out for one year. We had the crossover at Asbury. And the world got smaller. It got smaller immediately. (laughs) So we're getting ready to hear their story later today. So later later today, me and Kendra get to hear their story. Yeah, Ann and I, exactly. uh, We're uh, we're already going to come to you at some point. Y'all go ahead and prep yourselves for a call in conversation. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. But we also have an on the phone guest calling in today um, and she is also a long time Hannah's heart listener Um, we have Julia Crouch and um, so kind of how this came along Julia um, has been listening and she heard one of our episodes talking about stepmoms and how sometimes um, the desire to have children may never come and um, has just learned a lot personally and she wrote in and we got into this awesome conversation I was like you've got to come on Hannah's heart and share all of this because this is so she was sharing in her heart. Yeah, you know, exactly. Just being <laughs> honest with us. And I really appreciate when <clears throat> listeners feel like they can call in, write mm-hmm. in, you know, whatever, and just share what their thoughts yeah. were and their heart was about the shows, whether they completely agree with everything yeah. that was said or rather it's a little different. And so. Yeah, and, and this is an older, um, someone who's walked through infertility for a long time, not yeah. someone who's in the thick of it right now, but she's kind of made her peace about the journey and where God is at. And so it's, it's nice to sometimes have somebody who the end, yeah. like when you're in the middle of it, you're like, I don't know, will this end in a baby? Will it end in an right. adoption? Um, but here's somebody with a perspective that she never would have expected yeah. um, and is so in love with Jesus. So, Julia, welcome to the program. <laughs> uh, thank you. It's so good to be with you. It's such an honor. Uh, yeah, it's interesting that you say that I've, I've come to peace with it because, um, y- you know, that that's a struggle. Mm-hmm. In fact, a, a couple days ago, I was awakened in the middle of the night, and I thought to myself, I can't go on this show. I can't do this. I can't do this because I I know that part of what I want to share is the truth of God Mm -hmm. and and the truth of His promises, and yet the struggle is so real. And Mm -hmm. even for me, as as I can look at these things, you know, I often joke that the distance between the head and the heart is a million miles. Mm -hmm. You know, because we can we can know truth, but um, you know the making sure it is deep rooted in our hearts in such a way that we can truly find peace. Um, I think that uh, that's a journey. And that's one of the reasons as I, as I wrote to you, I use the term journey because um, I'm, I'm not sure any of us, I know at least for me, maybe I should speak just for myself. I've kind of come to peace with the idea that it is a journey Mm -hmm. and that there will be days that my childlessness breaks my heart again Mm. and just overwhelms me with emotion um, mm-hmm. And then there'll be other times when, you know, the Lord is so gracious, and mm-hmm. there will be times when I walk and I think, okay, 
today I sense today I sense peace. Today, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, I'm I'm clinging to the truth of God and the promises of God and the goodness of God mm-hmm. in the midst of it all. But but I I, I have not perfected that. Wow. <laughs> and and I, as I talk to other people that that go on this journey, you know, that's. That's one thing that I think is important for us mm-hmm. to understand that, you know, I'm not sure there is an arrival, you know, a point at which mm-hmm. other than the, the moment we step into glory and we see Jesus face to face, and then every pain and every tear mm. will vanish. It will all make sense. It will all, we will have perfect peace then. Mm-hmm. But on this side of glory, I think it's, I think it's important for us to, to really cling to the wisdom that God gives us about how to walk through um, life circumstances that aren't necessarily peaceful. Right. <laughs> How do we do that in a way that brings glory to God and allows Him to do the work in our life that we know He wants to accomplish? How do we come alongside Him and cooperate with the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. to bring about those things in us that He's He's trying to accomplish? Uh, that's that's what's most important, really. Well, I want to get into the nuts and bolts of how you did that. But first, let's go back. And can you give us just a short update version of, of your story? What was the journey of disappointment with childless, sure. childlessness sure, sure. So, like for you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Uh, my husband, Danny, and I, we just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. So we were married 25 years ago. Uh, the Lord has protected and yeah. provided within our marriage. That's a big Thank deal these yes. days. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, when he and I married, uh, there's a little bit of an age difference. He's about 13 years older than I am, and I was about 30 when we married. He actually had four children from his first marriage, mm-hmm. and his marriage, um, to his great regret and heartache, had ended in divorce. Mm-hmm. And so he was raising his four children um, that were uh, teenagers at the time that he and I met. They were a little wow. bit younger, obviously, when he went through his divorce, because it had been about five years. Mm-hmm. And so, um, anyway, he, he was, uh, he loves being a dad. That was one of the things that impressed me right away about him was that the things on our first date that he was most excited to talk about were his children. I love it. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, he, he, um, did not want more children. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, frankly, right or wrong, I looked at that situation and I thought, you know what? He is dealing with so much pain. He had Mm. come from a broken family. He never wanted that for his children. Uh, His children were still hurting. He was still hurting. And I looked at that and thought, well, of course he can't possibly consider how beautiful adding children to this family Mm -hmm. could be because he's exhausted (laughs) and he's he's still recovering and, and trying to repair and rebuild and things like that. So in my own heart, in my own mind, um, I really anticipated that we would get to that point, Mm -hmm. that while in in the moment he could not imagine having additional kids, um, I just thought, Lord, he, he just needs to heal. He needs a helpmate to come alongside him, to support him, to help, you know, take care of the home and take care of work and take care of all the things that for, you know, that are life that he was carrying on his own. And that just never came to be. He, he never changed his mind. Um, and though I pleaded and pleaded with the Lord, um, and every, frankly, every month went through that emotional whirlwind. I know mm. your listeners know that, that, yeah. oh, maybe this will be the month. Maybe this will be a month. I, you know, I kept waiting for the miracle, thinking, you know, the Lord has placed on my heart this, this desire my whole life, this strong, strong desire to be a mom. And surely it'll come to fruition. Surely it will happen. It, and it's just, this is just testing my patience, which is frankly almost non-existent anyway. <laughs> so I could see that the Lord needed to teach me some of that. And, and so walking through those months that turned into years, I just, I, you know, even, to, even today, I'm now 55. I'm, I'm past childbearing years. I'm past even child adopting years. Uh, you know, there's, there's, it's hard for those words to come across my lips of, mm. you know, I'll, I'll never be, I'll never mm. have children of my own. I'll never be a mom in that way. And so um, that's been our journey. And our journey is rich with blessings. The Lord has been, uh, again, so gracious and so protective. Um, I have a wonderful relationship with my four stepchildren. We have 11 grandchildren. We have two oh, great-grandchildren. Wow. And so I am surrounded by a beautiful, supportive, loving family. Mm. Um, and yet I, I, I still walk that journey of the heartache of not having had children of my own. 
Mm. You you wrote something to us to kind of help us keep on uh, on track of what you wanted to share, and, and and you wrote that the number one point that you wanted people to come away with was that knowing the character of God is the ultimate foundation for your spiritual health. Um, Absolutely. And so, in the, let's go into the middle of like you have this great desire. And you're calling out to God, Lord, would you please do this in my family? Would you please change my husband's heart? And God is just, you know, seems to be saying no, 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 no. Did that make you doubt the character of God in, in any oh. moment? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and for me, that's part of the lesson, I think, mm-hmm. is why knowing the character of God is so absolutely essential. Because I think it's human nature. I think any of us that have walked through hard times, whatever those specific circumstances are, um, it is, it's in our, in our DNA. It's our human nature to say, well, you know, does God love me? Does God care that I'm walking through this? Does God hear my prayers? This isn't fair. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all of those human emotions that make us question the goodness of God question the character of God. And, and so, yes, I, I, I walked through that and, and walked through deep seasons of um, just anger. You know, mm. how, how could this be happening? Um, I know you all have said on your program before that, you know, wanting to be a mother is a good thing. It's an honorable thing. And so I had those, all those kind of arguments with God and frustration of saying, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to do something good. I want to be a mom. I want to love another. I want to nurture another. I want to raise another for your glory and point them to you. All of those things are good things. Why is this not happening? And, um, and so, again, I think part of the lessons that I am learning is that knowing God is so absolutely essential mm-hmm. because God's character is defined. God's who God is is who God is mm-hmm. from eternity past for eternity moving forward, and if we as as fallen, broken, hurting, sinful people try to determine the character of God based on our interpretation of our current circumstances, we're going to mess it up every time because we are going to start to think: Is He unloving? Mm-hmm. Is He uncaring? Is He not compassionate? Does He not hear me? Is He not involved? We're going to naturally start thinking those things. And so it's so incredibly important that we don't start to assume that we get to define who God is. We don't. God is defined, and God is loving, and He is perfect, and He does care, and He does hear us, and he, He's involved in every intimate detail of our life, and nothing goes without His knowledge. Nothing happens outside of His sovereignty. And He is utterly trustworthy. Mm-hmm. Amen. So as all of those, amen, right? <laughs> and so all, as all those kind of broken, human, sinful emotions start to flood in, we have to be equipped and we have to be prepared to combat that with truth Mm -hmm. and to say, I know my God loves me. I know that God cares what I'm going through. I know that God works together all things for good because I love Him and I'm called according to His purpose. Mm -hmm. All of those rich promises, that's the only thing that can usher in peace. Because otherwise, we're just we're lost in this hopelessness of a God who doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. an, an yeah. uncaring God is not the God we serve. So to usher in this idea of peace that surpasses understanding is only it can only happen when mm-hmm. we know the character of God, and we know that from His Word. We know that from studying His Word, opening the Bible, and and allowing Him to reveal Himself because He does. He is such a He's such a gracious God in that He wants us to know Him. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to be distant. And so within His Word, we start to see all of these qualities and characteristics of Him, that He, that he is powerful and merciful and compassionate and loving, um, and that He's in it for our good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think back, I know I know all of us have, have come alongside a teenager, for example, whose parents give them everything they ask for. You know, mm-hmm. they've got the new car and the perfect clothes, and they get to go on the best vacations and all that kind of stuff. But we can see when a parent does that, it doesn't always go so well. You know, mm-hmm. suddenly you have a kid who's spoiled and entitled, and their character is flawed because they're getting everything they want. Yeah. Well, God's the perfect father, and so... Um, even knowing that, that, that 
he's not so concerned with giving me everything I ask for, thankfully, <laughs> because mm-hmm. we know how that can turn out, you know? I could be a spoiled, rotten Christian that just demands what I want from God and expects mm-hmm. him to do it. But instead, he's concerned about my character. He's concerned about my, even my holiness, being conformed to the image yes. of Christ. And so... Um, when we know that about him, it gives us a different perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we can look on life circumstances <clears throat> as painful as they are, and we can, we can start to grasp a little of what God might be doing in the situation. Yeah. During, um, during this time of, for you, childlessness, mm-hmm. were you able to find peace in parenting your stepchildren? Like, did, did that come you know, that, through your heart? Was it good for your heart? Yeah, that's a great question. And and I've often heard Jade, you know, your other co-host, yeah, yeah. talk about this because she, too, is a, ch- is a stepmom. And I, I'll tell you, my role with my stepkids has has not been one that, that I think of as parenting, partly because they were a little bit older, <clears throat> yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, the youngest one was um, 13 when Danny and I uh, got together. And so, uh, and their mother is, is still in the picture. Gotcha. So, um, I, you know, I was kind of in that situation where, uh, uh, first of all, I didn't know how to be a mother. Who knows how to be a mother to <laughs> right. teenagers? I don't even <laughs> think mothers that birthed them know how to be. <laughs> but, but I sure was ill-equipped for that. You know, I yeah. wasn't prepared to be a mother really to teenagers. And, and they were all hurting. You know, mm. they had just been through this horrific, they were hurting. And um, so, you know, those first few years in particular were quite hard, mm. and uh, God's been faithful, and we now have wonderful relationships, mm. but um, there, it, it, for whatever reason, because, because I screwed it up and I didn't know how to be a good stepmother, or because of just the hurt and the circumstances or whatever, there wasn't a lot of that kind of close mothering, mm-hmm. feeling like I could nurture them and that they loved me and, you know, I loved them and all that. There wasn't that kind of satisfaction that came in those first years of our marriage. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So how did God for you um, redirect that desire? Um, because I feel like if God puts a desire to nurture in you, then there's someone that he has for you to nurture, whether it's your biological children or stepchildren or um, yeah. Sunday school class. What did, how has he sure. redirected yeah. your heart and, and help you to find fulfillment? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, he has in many ways. Um, I, I'm very active in my church. I do children's ministry at church. Mm-hmm. Um, I love my grandchildren, so that's been, you know, mm-hmm. uh, just incredible. And, and they've all been born since I was in the picture, of course. So they it's never like I was the step, you know, because mm-hmm. I was oh, I around like from the very beginning for all of them. So that's kind of added a, a fun dynamic to the relationships there, you know. Um, but I'll also say, Kendra, that um, part of what I've kind of come to peace with is the idea that um, he, he might not do that. Mm-hmm. He, I, I haven't found what I would say is a replacement. Mm-hmm. I have some friends that don't have children that have said, oh, I get such satisfaction from my nieces and nephews. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I have found that my work in the church just, that has given me what I was yearning for and mm-hmm. things like that. I, I haven't gotten to that point, and um, I've kind of come to peace with that because I look at, for example, Paul, the Apostle Paul in the Bible, where he talks about the thorn in the flesh. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm under the impression that his pain never went mm. away. I don't, I don't think that at some point in his life, all of a sudden, whatever that thorn was, all of a sudden, it was no longer an issue for him. Mm. I think he had that until the day, again, until the day he stepped into mm-hmm. glory. I, I think that that was something he carried. And yet the Lord says, my grace is sufficient. Mm, amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just about to bring up and, that verse because that's yes, so powerful. That's the yes. answer to that is he, God, like, that's the he's asking, that. take yep. this away, take this away. And his answer is, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm-hmm. That's right. Wow. That's right. My and power and made so perfect for me, in your I've kind of come, mm-hmm. yeah, I've kind of come to, to a little bit of peace with the idea that, this pain will, it may, I mean, the Lord could take it away in an instant. Mm-hmm. And I want to be sure that I will cooperate with that. If it, you know, it's interesting. There's, there's the, um, the story in the Bible about the lame man who the Lord heals. You know, he'd been lame for, I think it's 38 years. And it's so interesting to me because he says to the man before he heals him, he says, do you want to be mm-hmm. well? 
And I, that has struck me with the idea, because I think sometimes life's hurts for us become our identity. Mm-hmm. And yes. it's like we, we almost cling to them, like, okay, this is who I am. This is, this is my thing. This is, you know, mm. I don't want to be that. I, 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 if the Lord is willing to heal me from this and take away this pain and take away this desire, I want to cooperate with that. And I have prayed for that, but I haven't yet experienced that. Mm-hmm. And so, again, part of the journey for me is c- coming to the peace that says, his grace is sufficient. Mm-hmm. And today may be a day when I walk through and I'm teary-eyed all day. Mm-hmm. Or maybe this is a day when mm-hmm. that, that pain is, is heavier than it might be on other days. And then I'll have days when it's like, wow, this is just, you know, thank you, Lord. This has been a great day. Um, but I, I look at it and I think to myself, I, I truly believe that's part of how he is using these circumstances to mold and shape me again mm-hmm. to, to help my character to become more, he's conforming me to the image of Christ. Mm. And I even look, you know, I was thinking about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane where he's agonizing, agonizing about what he's about to face. And yet he says, not my will, but yours be done. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus has modeled this for us perfectly. It's not necessarily that we get to the point where like, hey, there's no problem, a okay, no pain, this is great, I'm good with this. No, that, that day may come, but that day may never come. Mm-hmm. And if that day never comes, for us to still look at our perfectly loving, perfectly holy, perfectly sovereign Father and say, but not my will, but mm-hmm. yours be done then he has accomplished what Mm -hmm. he wants to in our life. Mm -hmm. And so I I want to cooperate with that and and not go into it expecting that he's going to make this just comfy for me. You know, Mm -hmm. he may. Thank you, Lord. He's so gracious. He brings us so many wonderful blessings and gives us comfort in so many ways. But it may just be that he comforts us amidst Mm -hmm. the pain. What you're sharing is so powerful. And I feel like you've earned the right to talk into people's lives because of your journey. And like, if you are able to say, I still, I'm 55 and I still have this ache in my heart. It did, God didn't take it away, but I still love him and I still cling to his character and I still proclaim every day that he is good. Then those of us that are maybe earlier in our journeys might be able to say, you know what? There is hope. Maybe the hope isn't that, oh, I'll definitely get a baby. Maybe the hope isn't that I will definitely have this pain taken away, but my hope is in Christ and that he is sufficient. Like that scripture said, like you are, if, if you, (laughs) if you, you can do it and can, and can believe it. I think that gives us so much more confidence to lean into that yeah. character of God. But you also yeah. mentioned in your notes um, that just for kind of the spiritual and emotional health and mental health, when you're going through yeah. a, a grieving process, that there are some practical things that you can do um, to yeah. be able to yeah. accept God's goodness in your life in other areas. Maybe he's not meeting that need of Lord, I really want a child, but there's other ways that we can kind of block ourselves off to the goodness of God. Is that right? Oh, amen. Surely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I I think we have to be careful about that because, you know, oftentimes we talk about um, times when we have to kind of protect ourselves, like, am I going to go to that baby shower? Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) can I celebrate with this friend who just found out that she's pregnant? Um, And I do believe that there's there's time and place for boundaries, but I also think we have to be a little bit careful with that in that sometimes we just have to sacrificially celebrate. (laughs) I hear (laughs) you. What I found... Yes, and what I found is that when I'm willing to do that, you know, mm-hmm. th- there is still there's joy in that. There is joy that comes from celebrating God's goodness for another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Amen. and um, and and failing to do that really is. It's that that's that little spirit of envy. As much as mm-hmm. we hate to call it what it is, <laughs> sure. You know, when that's the when I land in that spot where I say I I can't celebrate with this person because it hurts me too much. Mm-hmm. It's because I'm envious. It's because mm-hmm. I want what they have, and and so being willing to to turn to the Lord with that and say, Lord, prune that off of me, chip mm-hmm. that off of me as much as it's going to hurt and, and enable me to do, to come alongside and celebrate your goodness in this other person's life, you know. Um, and I think there's, in addition to that, and that, that you can't do that every time. I understand we have to, there's times we just have to say, Lord, I just need to be into the shadow of your wing, mm-hmm. and that's the only place I can be right now. <laughs> yes, yeah. But even practical things like, you know, do get involved. Don't. It's so easy, so, so easy. And I say this because I've experienced it where you just want to crawl in your cocoon and say, mm-hmm. I just can't take 
life. I can't take this everything around me. We've got to bust out of that. Mm-hmm. So whether it's practical things like get up and go on a walk, mm-hmm. um, don't turn. That's another thing. Don't turn to things for relief of the pain that aren't godly relief. Amen. You know, so eating too much, mm. eat, eating that quarter ice cream or or drinking or drugs or so many other things mm-hmm. that our culture says turn to when you hurt, let's relieve mm-hmm. this pain and here's how you do it. You know, I think we have to be on guard about that. Um, getting involved again, I'm so I've been so blessed with my by, by my church family mm-hmm. and being active in my church and and because every every day is a gift from God. Mm-hmm. Every day is a gift. That's every right. talent that we have is a gift from God and we are mm-hmm. called to be good stewards. And so if we walking through the pain of this, if we allow that pain to keep us from being good stewards of all the things he's given us, that's a problem. That's mm-hmm. that's yeah. not us being obedient. So we've got Julia, to watch for that. This is so powerful. Thank you so much. You have poured out your heart. And I just love how the Word of God flows out of you like a it river. Um, and you speak mm-hmm. from so much experience. It is. My strength. <laughs> it is. It's my a God. light to our path in times of darkness. Hey, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing. And I know you're going to continue to be a light everywhere that God takes you um, because you know His character in a way that many people never will. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. To God be the glory. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for coming on. And thank y'all for listening to Hannah's Heart. We'll see y'all again next week.